Do you hate being deeply depressed? If so, head over to Messy Modding Store for all your gaming needs where you can get GTA 5 cash and rank, GTA 5 modded accounts, and many more. And if you have any doubts, look at all these happy customers. Over the years I've encountered many players, each with their unique playstyle. This has led to some incredible fights that have solidified GTA 5 as one of the best games I've ever played. As long time viewers of the channel will know, I like to play in a certain way. Most of the time I like to play clean, mainly with snipers only. I like to use rifles too, but I never like to be the first one to use tactics that give me an unfair advantage, such as using BST. I like the defining outcome in fights to be the person's skill. This is because I think the better player should win. However, and rightfully so, many people think otherwise. With no rules on how to play GTA Online, people can play how they want, and that's perfectly fine. However, the way that people play highlights that person's level of sportsmanship. Some players, such as Metal Shimu, will try and use vehicles or guns that are hard to use and purposely put themselves at a disadvantage to highlight their skill. This is perfectly contrasted by the people that will hide in facilities, apartments, and only use vehicles that are overpowered, such as the Oppressor Mark II, to try and get their kills. Their main goal is to maximise their number of kills while minimising their deaths and some players will go to extreme measures. These players are currently referred to as KD Warriors. For almost three years now, there has always been one name that stood out. One name that I find synonymous with KD Warriors. I'd encountered this player many times, and I'd never fought someone that had played in such a strange way. The full video documenting this story can be found in the description. But for context, I'm going to do a quick recap. It was clear from the start that this player was addicted to the oppressor Mark II. Now this is fairly common in GTA Online, however what isn't is how they played when they had a threat. Not only did the player leave the session, but they did it in a way which involved closing the game down, which meant their death didn't count. Since this player remembered me, it was almost impossible to get into a fight. They would only target people that wouldn't fight back, or people that weren't good enough. I don't like using the orbital cannon, but sometimes this is the only time you can kill players that play like this. Luckily for me, they ended up being AFK, and I could get a few easy kills. This definitely put a spanner in the works of them trying to get the highest KD possible. Eventually, when they finally came around, they teleported straight away to their apartment. If they were already AFK, this is fine. However, as you'll see in the next fights, this is a strategy that they use all the time. Every time I get into their session, they'd always be killing random people that don't want to fight back. After understanding this guy's playstyle, the only way to fight them was by being really far away. Every time that I tried to make an attempt to have an actual fight, they would recognise the threat and immediately back out. It was clear that they had one goal and one goal only in mind, and that was to increase their KD ratio. They weren't interested in having interesting fights like I do. Even though we weren't having an actual fight, my presence in the session was still keeping these innocent players safe. After a few times, I started to notice a pattern. I would join the session, I would also cannon them, kill them, they would teleport away to their apartment, wait there for a bit, and then leave. Now I really don't like playing this way. So the next session, I decided to try something else. I decided, instead of spawning in my facility, I was spawning in my office. Surprise surprise, they're on an oppressor, and they've just been a nuisance the entire session. People are already complaining about them. The outcome of what happens next really shocked me. You'll see that even just the sight of me in the session, this guy knows that I'm not going to let him go away. He knows that he's not safe, and he knows that he can't grieve when I'm around. The fact that he can't grieve, the fact that he can't kill these players that can't fight back, is enough to make him leave. From 
from his perspective, a random guy has just sniped him off his bike. What do you reckon his next move will be? It's to hide all session until I finally give up. I have countless examples of me joining this guy's session, him killing innocent people, and as soon as he sees my name, he just disappears. While GTA lets you play how you want, you'll always be humiliating seeing players like this. Surely for these people it gets to a point where it's not even fun for them anymore. Originally, I thought you couldn't get any worse than the Stray Cat situation. Until, one day, I found a player whose quest for the highest KD possible has overwhelmed them and has got to a point where it completely ruins their gameplay experience. This all started on a random day a few months back. I just joined a session and a player with a high KD caught my eye. I couldn't find this player anywhere on the map, but based on their activity in the chat on the right, they were active in the session. Something weird started to happen. Whenever someone would kill someone, that person would get a bounty set on them. And the person that would set the bounty was my target, Marlene underscore Mitford. I'm still curious, so I'll go to check the map again, see if I can spot them. And to no avail, can't find them at all. Marley Mitford. Oh, what a not spectator. Okay, I just want to see where they are. If people aren't spectatable on the TV, you can go into the facility and use the strike team to spectate them. However, Marlene's name wasn't on the list. I then put a provocative message in the chat. In all honesty, I didn't really understand what was going on at this point. I don't really keep up to date with most of the updates, so I wasn't really sure what was happening. I was under the impression that no matter what the players would do, I could still spectate them and find out where they were using a strike team. I guess I was wrong, but either way, that's not really that important. Marlene says in the chat, let's do something about that passive. They must have a problem with me being impassive, whether by the way that they're playing. I think it's a little bit hypocritical. For anyone wondering, this one of the few times where I've not been sure whether a guy's modding or not. The only evidence I had against them for modding was the fact that they were off radar constantly and there was no way of finding out where they were, not even using spectating. However, I found that me calling them a modder in game chat really annoyed them, so I kept pressing, kept pressing, just to see what they were actually doing. Sometimes people like to defend themselves and prove other people wrong. I'd set a bounty on them so I could easily identify them on the minimap. I could see that they were popping in and out of view. I'd left them alone for a while, but they kept trying to get my attention, and eventually they appeared on the map. It seems like they've been hiding in their submarine under the water the entire time. When they eventually came up, they used the missiles. And I have no idea how good the lasers against these missiles, so I just jumped out. I don't really research this kind of stuff. Gilly Master would probably know though. So I get close to them, start firing rockets at them, and you'll see something funny. What they've actually done is park their submarine in the range of their yacht defences. This means that my rockets can't hit them, but they can shoot back at me. They're basically in god mode. They are untouchable. In all fairness, it's quite a smart strategy. But as time goes on, we'll see that it just becomes sad. In the chat, Marlene seems to accuse me of killing close of random people. I haven't killed anyone this session yet. However, because I've got a high mental state, apparently that means I'm a griefer. They seem to be upset that I accuse them of being a cheater. But anyway, after the long, boring messaging backwards and forwards, they end up leaving the session. I then realise I can join the crew, and if you can join the crew, you can join the Royal Navy! No. But uh, yeah, if you can join the crew, you can join any players online in that crew. So this meant I had basically unlimited access to joining Marlene's sessions. I didn't manage to get into their session straight away, so I thought it would probably be best to change account and then have a fresh encounter. After I load up, I get in their session and you'll never guess where they are again. They're in their Kasatka submarine. And then within half an hour of me joining the session, I try and find out where they are. They're not on the radar at all. This means that they're probably underwater again. Hey, 
Marlene actually gets a kill on someone. And you can see in the game chat, that person says I can play sub yacht forever. So I'm pretty sure they're using the same tactics before by sitting next to their yacht. The only way to really get them out of this situation is to auto can them. So that's what I do. Thinking back, I probably still would have done the same thing again. Because there's literally nothing you can do. They're they're in full god mode, the only way to get them was with the auto cannon, and as much as I hate to use it, I, I kind of had to. So anyway, I go to my strike team, try and spectate them, and it doesn't seem to work, and this is because they actually end up leaving the session. Somehow they ended up joining back, whether it was on purpose or an accident, but you'll notice that they spawned in the same place before, right next to their yacht. Kinda sad. They actually end up staying in their submarine underwater for about the next half an hour. And that's where this clip ends. But it's okay, there's more. A few days later, I join again and try and get the elemental surprise. I auto can them, and at this point, I completely forgot about the RC cars, and turns out that's what they were in. So obviously, this puts them outside their RC car, uh, be able to see them on the map, and what do they do next? They go back into an RC car. I'm not going to let them get away this easily, though. I'm going to keep auto cannoning them until they've got no RC vehicles left. And then after a while, I decide to get my jet, fly it over, and I'm, I'm about to do something I'm, I think is pretty high IQ. Let me explain. So I try and find out where they are by looking at the people that they're killing, where they spawn in, and I'm just presuming that their RC tank, car, whatever, is going to be nearby. Unfortunately, someone starts sniping my jet with explosive ammo, and I end up being on the ground. However, my incredible ears hear a car driving at me, and I don't want to take any chances, so I blow it up. Turns out, it was Marlene's RC car. So, I now know where they spawn in after they get out of their RC car. And using this information, I can sit on a rooftop nearby and just presume that eventually they're going to get out of their RC car at some point during the game. So I get one kill on them, they of course go into their RC car again. And I wait about 20 minutes until they eventually blow up. This is where I become probably one of the most unlucky players ever. Okay, there he's fucking go. Oh, you're joking me. So I can't shoot them because my screen's shaking from all the modders. That happen to activate this explosion spamming at the exact point that I can have a shot on Marlene. They then go into passive and then into their office and then that's the end of the fight for that day. Then, six days later, we encounter each other again. Of course I go straight for the autocannon, but they are in an RC car as expected. So this means I don't actually get the kill, but it does kick them out of the RC car. And then as soon as they spawn back in, they go straight to passive mode. I mean, that's completely fine. I guess they don't want to fight. But again, if we see how this entire thing plays out, it is kind of weird. Later on, I witness them in an RC car and they do start going around killing people. Unfortunately, I have no proof of this because of the way I recorded this next part. It was just in little clips. I didn't actually clip the part where they were killing people. But you're gonna have to take my word for it. Anyway, I spectate them, find out where they are and put a little marker there so I can remember and go back to that place. I'm gonna observe them. And they're in an RC car. I park up above the spawn and they eventually spawn in after their RC car gets destroyed or something like that. But for some reason none of my rockets were hitting them. And maybe they just turned off their computer because they ended up leaving. A bit later on I managed to actually auto cannon them. Yo I got it! I got it. But then I get interrupted by another person in the session and Marlene eventually leaves. So, a next session, with the help of a few friends spectating them, they can give me their location and I can get them. Yeah, it's explosive round. Did you, kill you can see I was just a millisecond off actually getting them. You can see the little dot disappear. They actually ended up going into their RC car. So he's gonna be where? Office, I see him. Oh fuck! Did he already? He went into oh, RC already. Yeah. Yeah. One more rocket. He's dead. Come on. Yeah. 
You got him, nice. As soon as I get him out of his RC tank, he's straight into an RC car. I've never seen a person hide in RC cars as much as this guy. Getting there, hot man. You alright? Going forward to the right? Oh, this one. Who's right? You mean in here? So this whole thing goes on for a while. Probably for about half an hour. They never end up leaving their RC car. Bro, you... This, this is not Poggers. Oh, he's left. Right. The next time we join them, I'll come back with a different plan. This time, I'm going to be in a Savage trying to destroy their RC car. Then we will have another person in the orbital cannon holding over that spot. As soon as I destroy their RC car, they'll pre-charge the cannon and time it perfectly. So as soon as they spawn in, they get blown up. Alright, Danny, pre-charge it. Let's go! <laughs> Let's go! That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Bam! The finger gun! This is how we do it down in Puerto Rico, yes! Oh, they oh, leave. What is the fun of hiding in an RC and leaving the moment you... Uh, it's just... RC players like to say, Oh yeah! Uh -huh. I'm not Look, being told him. I'm not being toxic. You know. Look, I'm trolling you. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. It's not toxic because it's trolling. Now, using a similar strategy to before, I'm waiting for Marlene to blow themselves up, and then I can pre-charge the cannon and get them as soon as they spawn in. Now, I really hate playing with the auto cannon. I find it really boring, and I'm sure you guys will agree it's not the best content to watch. So what I do try is to go over and try and get something on ground. Parkour. Yo! Ryan, what? Oh, you're trolling me in an RC? I'm trolling your Wi-Fi. Hey, I'm gonna troll this Molotov for your window. Oh yeah, you see the brakes on your car? Trolled. You know that sister of yours? Oh yeah. <laughs> She's about to get trolled. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is where the saga ends. Marlene would always be in an RC car. As soon as they were out of one, they'd go instantly back into another one. You can see over the span of six days, their KD increases by 0.08, which is quite a substantial amount. It just shows that this person wants to increase their KD, and that's the main reason behind the way they play. They would always be killing innocent people, and eventually I think I got the better of them, because I haven't seen them online in months. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, I spent a lot of time with it, so any feedback would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Hopefully it'll be sooner than a month.